Hey guys, good morning. Did I just close out of my Bible? Good morning, Vicki. Hey, this is Christopher Holder with Real Life Ministry. We are just about to get started this morning, reading the book of John. Uh, just to continue our series, we're on John 13 today. And um, we'll get going here in just one second. I just want to give people a quick opportunity to join. While I close out some windows, I'm actually going to be reading off of my laptop today, doing things just a little differently. I found a new spot to sit, and I like it a lot. This is a more comfortable spot for me. It was uh, had been confiscated by some dogs that uh, really like to look out the window that's behind me. And uh, this is one of the more comfortable spots in the house. Hopefully the lighting's okay. I think it looks... He looks pretty good. I don't have my makeup crew on today, but you know, I guess they're off for the holidays. Uh, and I'm still waking up a little bit, so please bear with me as we get rolling this morning. All right, it's 7.31, time to get started. Everybody's had a whole minute to see the notification and join in. Like I said, this is Christopher Holder with Real Life Ministry, and so in this series, we're going live on Periscope, as you can tell, and that is so that, uh, you know, if you have any questions while we go along, uh, you can ask, and I'll, uh, I'll keep looking up and, and hopefully catch your questions and be able to answer them for you. I don't have all the answers, but I know the person who does, and I can always um, do some research for you, help you out, see what we can find. And basically with this series, we're just reading the book of John. Um, this is the disciple whom Jesus loved, as he's referred to, and not that he didn't love the others, but uh, for some reason, John felt the need to let us know that Jesus loved him. Makes you wonder, huh? He and uh, Peter were kind of competitive, it seemed, so maybe Maybe that was just a jab at Peter. I've also heard uh, that possibly somebody else um, pinned John that he was dictating to somebody, and maybe that was just kind of their thing there. But uh, I don't know. So anyway, John's a cool guy. Um, seems to be a very, as we've been reading, kind of a passionate kind of guy. Um, has a huge heart for Jesus. And um, I call him kind of a the love disciple, whereas Peter was more the cut their ears off and pick a fight disciple. So, we're reading the book of John. I'm reading out of the New Century Version. Hey, good morning. Thanks for joining us. We're about to get started. Uh, is that Kelvin? It's kind of hard to see. Sorry about that. Um, and so, like I said, this is uh, the New Century Version. Uh, you're welcome to read along or just listen in if you'd like. And uh, the only reason I use this version is just because I think it's a really easy read. It's kind of hard to find uh, in uh, hard paper format these days for some reason. Uh, but it's a very, very easy read. Um, he didn't say the disciple that Jesus loved above all others. No, he did not actually say that. But he did feel the need to mention that he was the disciple that Jesus loved. I think he also... Um, made it very clear that when they raced for the tomb, he beat Peter there. Now, Peter did go in first, but uh, but he outran Peter. So, um, anyway, so we are in John 13. We're going to go ahead and get started here in just about 15 seconds as soon as I take another sip of coffee. And basically, we just read for about 15 minutes. That's why we're only in uh, chapter 13. We're not getting very far very fast. But we're taking our time reading for about 15 minutes. I figure those are, you know, it's about 20 minutes with all my running my mouth. And uh, I figure those are blocks that you could probably get away with, you know, watching, listening to at work. Uh, or if you've got a short drive to a grocery store or something, if you download these to your phone. So... Without further ado, here we go. John 13. 
It was almost time for the Passover feast. Jesus knew that it was time for him to leave this world and go back to the Father. He had always loved those were, who were in his own, who were his own in the world, and he loved them all the way to the end. Jesus and his followers were at the evening meal. The devil had already persuaded Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, to turn against Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him power over everything and that he had come from God and was going back to God. So during the meal, Jesus stood up and took off his outer clothing. Taking a towel, he wrapped it around his waist. Then he poured water into a bowl and began to wash the followers' feet, drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. Jesus came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You don't understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter said, No, you will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, If I don't wash your feet, you are not one of my people. Simon Peter answered, Lord, then wash not only my feet, but wash my hands and my head too. Good old Peter. Jesus said, After a person has had a bath, his whole body is clean. He needs only to wash his feet. And you men are clean, but not all of you. Jesus knew who would turn against him, and that is why he said, not all of you are clean. When he had finished washing their feet, he put on his clothes and sat down again. He asked, do you understand what I have just done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, because that is what I am. If I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you should also wash each other's feet. I did this as an example so that you should do as I have done for you. I tell you the truth, a servant is not greater than his master. A messenger is not greater than the one who sent him. If you know these things, you will be blessed if you do them. I'm not talking about all of you. I know those, ho uh, those I have chosen but this is to bring about what the scripture said. The man who ate at my table has turned against me. I'm telling you now, I'm telling you this now before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe that I am he. Hey, good morning. Welcome. welcome. We are um, reading from the book of John, John 13. If you want to catch up, we are at uh, John 13, 19 and still going. And he said, I am telling you this now before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe that I am he. I tell you the truth. Whoever accepts anyone I send also accepts me. And whoever accepts me also accepts the one who sent me. Hey, Merhaba. Good morning. We are reading the book of John, and we are in John thirteen twenty one. if you wish to read along. Otherwise, feel free to just kick back and listen. After Jesus said this, he was very troubled. He said openly, I tell you the truth, one of you will turn against me. The followers all looked at each other because they did not know whom Jesus was talking about. One of the followers sitting next to Jesus was the follower Jesus loved, aka John. Simon Peter motioned to him to ask Jesus whom he was talking about. That follower, I don't know why they don't just say John, it's kind of funny. That follower leaned closer to Jesus and asked, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered, I will dip this bread into the dish. The man I give it to is the man who will turn against me. So Jesus took a piece of bread, dipped it, and gave it to Judas Iscariot the son of Simon. As soon as, Jesus, as soon as Judas took the bread, Satan entered him. Jesus said to him, the thing that you will do, 
do it quickly. Whew. No one at the table understood why Jesus said this to Judas. Since he was the one who kept the money box, some of the followers thought Jesus was telling him to buy what was needed for the feast or to give something to the poor. Ju uh, Judas took the bread that Jesus gave him and immediately went out. It was night. When Judas was gone, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man receives his glory, and God receives glory through him. If God receives glory through him, then God will give glory to the Son through himself, and God will give him glory quickly. Jesus said, My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and what I told the Jews I tell you now. Where I'm going, you cannot come. I give you a new command. Love each other. You must love each other as I have loved you. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Wow, think about the Christian church today. All people will know that you are my followers if you love each other. Are we doing a good job with that, guys? Simon Peter asked Jesus, Lord, where are you going? Jesus answered, Where I am going you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I'm ready to die for you. Jesus answered, Are you ready to die for me? I tell you the truth. Before the rooster crows, you will say three times that you don't know me. Verse 14, or chapter 14, sorry. Jesus said, Don't let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. I would not tell you this if it were not true. I am going there to prepare a place for you. After I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, so that you may be where I am. You will know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said to Jesus, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. If you really knew me, you would know my father too, but now you do know him, and you have seen him. That is probably one of the most powerful verses in the entire Bible. That is the ultimate claim of Jesus, and there are so many people in the world who just don't don't know that passage of scripture, John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The only way to the Father is through me. And if you don't go through Jesus, you simply don't get to the Father. It's part of why I'm doing this. That's, that's the sole purpose of, of this ministry is to share Jesus with you guys. And it's my prayer that you will all come to know him, if you don't already, so that you can get to the Father, so that you can see his glory, so that you can enter into a relationship with him. That's my prayer for you. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father. That is all we need. Jesus answered, I have been with you a long time now. Do you still not know me? Philip, whoever has seen me has seen the Father, so, so why do you say, show us the Father? Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I say to you don't come from me, but the Father lives in me and does his own work. Believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or believe because of the miracles I have done. I tell you the truth, whoever believes in me 
will do the same things that I do. Those who believe in me will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. And if you ask for anything in my name, I will do it for you so that the Father's glory will be shown through the Son. If you ask me for anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, you will obey my commands. I will ask the Father and he will give you another helper to be with you forever, the Spirit of Truth. We know him as the Holy Spirit. The world cannot accept him because it does not see him or know him, but you know him because he lives with you and he will be in you. I will not leave you all alone like orphans. I will come back to you. In a little while, the world will not see me anymore, but you will see me. Because I live, you will live too. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father and that you are in me and I am in you. Those who know my commands and obey them are the ones who love me. And my Father will love those who love me. I will love them and will show myself to them. So what are his commands? You know, we think of the Ten Commandments. We think of the hundreds of commandments in the Old Testament that go along with the Ten Commandments. But Jesus' commands are pretty simple. He says to love God with all your heart, all your soul, all your being, and to love your neighbor as yourself. There's really only two. Following Jesus is pretty darned easy. But you got to love him. And you got to love yourself. Then Judas, not Judas Iscariot, said, But Lord, why do you plan to show yourself to us and not to the rest of the world? Jesus answered, If people love me, they will obey my teaching. My Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Those who do not love me do not obey my teaching. This teaching that you hear is not really mine, it is from my Father who sent me. I've told you all these things while I am here with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, will teach you everything and will cause you to remember what I told you. This Helper is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. I leave you peace. My peace I give you. I do not give it to you as the world does. So don't let your hearts be troubled or afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going, but I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you should be happy that I am going back to the Father, because he is greater than I am. I have told you this now before it happens, so that when it happens, you will believe. I will not talk with you much longer, because the ruler of this world is coming. He has no power over me, but the world must know that I love the Father, so do exactly what the Father told me to do. Come now, let us go. And that is the end of John 14 and the end of our reading for today. So join us back again next week. We'll start in John 15 and hopefully get through John 15 and 16. We're actually starting to get close to the end of the book of John. And I'm thinking I'll probably keep going, um, maybe into the book of Acts. And that, um, the book of Acts is amazing. It talks about a lot of the really cool things that the disciples did after Jesus. Uh, It talks about um, the Holy Spirit coming and the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Um, It's a really, uh, really neat book. So maybe we'll just keep going with that. We'll see how it goes. In the meantime, check out our website, reallifeministry.net, our YouTube channel, Facebook, And please uh, share these posts and these teachings. We just posted another uh, cool teaching yesterday, uh, more on uh, the nature of God and answered some very good questions that came in. So please check those out, share them with people who need them. Have a blessed week, and we will see you next time on Real Life Ministry. Take care.